officially seven o'clock. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to Taking Seafood Social, sharing your story and making connections through online platforms. Our presenter this evening is Lisa Tossi. My name's Amy Schombach and I'll be moderating along with my co-moderator, Dr. Stuart Carlton. Just for a few housekeeping issues, we'll go ahead and keep everybody muted while the presentation's going on. And then if you have a question, go ahead and put it in the chat window. And after the presentation's over, we'll have some question and answer. Tonight, I'm excited to introduce to you Lisa Tossi. She's the Assistant Director for Communications and Outreach in Maryland Sea Grant and has over 17 years experience work, working in digital storytelling. Lisa, the floor is yours. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, basically, what I'm going to do tonight is um, show you a lot of examples in trying to get you excited about the possibilities of some um, different aspects of digital storytelling. Um, and, and able to do that, um, I'm going to be sharing some resources um, afterwards, and uh, they'll be shared out to all the participants. Uh, one of those is this presentation. It's a Prezi link. Um, so all you have to do is click on it and you can click through the presentation at any time, rewatch any of the videos um, and and review any parts that you'd like to. Um, the second item is going to be a Google Doc. And the Google Doc contains a lot of resources. Um, I think it's up to about seven pages now, but it includes lots, lots of tips and tricks that I talk about tonight, as well as lots of links. So if I mention any um, editing programs or apps that you might be interested in, they're all linked in the Google Doc. Um, that way you don't have to worry about taking notes. You don't have to um, stress about getting all the information. You can just sit back and look at the pictures and examples, and then um, you'll have all the resources and the link to this presentation afterwards. Um, so with that being said, I will get started. All right. Um, first, quick introduction. Um, as was mentioned, um, I have about 17 years experience in multimedia storytelling. I have a science undergraduate background and a master's in journalism. And then since then, I've been combining the two um, in many different aspects, um, everything from AmeriCorps to National Marine Educators Association to state parks to Sea Grant programs. Um, and in all those various um, roles, um, a few things have been consistent in that um, there's a lot of great stuff to capture and share and not much of a budget to do so. Um, if you've worked in nonprofits or for state parks, um, you, you know how it is with um, working, trying to do a lot with a little. Um, so in doing that, um, I've had to get creative over, creative over the years. Um, and much of what I'm gonna share tonight is basically um, can be done with a smartphone um, and free apps and tools that I'm gonna share. Um, so I'm, I try to keep things very low cost um, about the most expensive uh, piece of equipment I'll talk about tonight is a GoPro. Um, and um, those run around uh, anywhere from 250 up to $400 these days. Um, but we try to do everything very low budget and um, make things as easy as possible. Um, just for a quick background, basically anything uh, having to do with um, social media and sharing your stories is deeply rooted in storytelling, which we all know is an ancient art. Um, things have changed a lot over the years. We've gone from writing on, uh, you know, pen and paper to typewriters to laptops um, and now to smartphones and tablets. Um, it's been a very quick um, process over the last couple of years with lots of leaps and bounds in the technology. Um, the good news is that has made things so much easier for doing some really interesting sharing of your work. Um, and as I said, anymore um, with a smartphone, you can do so many cool things with sharing uh, what you're doing, the events you might be taking part in, or um, doing educational posts. Um, but it all um, revolves around good storytelling at the core. 
And if you're reading a good book or a good uh, magazine article or looking at a post, they all have the same elements. If you're um, really interested in a story, it's something that pulls you in, it has interesting characters, it might resonate with you personally, or it has a really good flow that keeps you, um, keeps you reading or keeps you watching. And a lot of times at the core, it's very simple or it teaches you something. And, and those are the two things that are really core um, to social media is simplicity and something that makes people go, huh, or they learn something that they wanna share. Um, and that's kind of the, the, the magic of social media is keeping it interesting, easy, and um, something that folks wanna share with one another. So um, with becoming a good storyteller, it's the same as with about any other um, work that you might do. Um, you become a good student of it. Um, if you wanna get better at it, you read, you watch, you listen, you dissect. You read something or you watch a video and you find it very interesting or you uh, hear something on a radio and the story that really pulls you in. Stop and think about it. Think about what it was about that story that worked for you. Were there really interesting quotes? Was there um, a person that had an interesting point of view? Were the visuals just absolutely beautiful and you couldn't stop watching because you wanted to see what come up, comes up next? Um, when you're starting out, just really think about what resonates with you and what makes you engage with a story, whether it's video or text or um, audio. Um, thinking about that and working from that is a really good place to start when you're thinking about telling your story. Uh, Randy Olson has a great book called Don't Be Such a Scientist, um, and he does some really good videos you can find on YouTube about um, kind of science storytelling. And as he says, tell simple yet true stories. No one will ever complain because you've made something too easy to understand. Um, and that's at the heart of it. So when it comes to social media, um, in the Sea Grant programs I've worked with, um, I worked in Delaware for several years and now with Maryland, um, historically we've done a lot of the um, old school storytelling. Uh, we put out news releases um, in Maryland Sea Grant. We've had a magazine, Chesapeake Quarterly, we've put out for quite some time, um, as well as done uh, longer films and documentaries, um, especially Maryland Sea Grant um, has a long history of full hour long documentaries that are really immersed in science. But as um, storytelling has changed and has the digital landscape has changed, um, a lot of the storytelling techniques have changed and we have made that um, kind of turn in Sea Grant as well. And we now do a lot on um, some different social media platforms. The ones that um, I'm gonna touch on that we are most active on right now are kind of the big ones, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And then of course for videos, um, we do a lot on YouTube. Um, all of them are very, um, can be very visually focused and all of them have slightly different audiences, um, but they all count on kind of short, simple stories um, that resonate. Um, Pew Research, it's one of the links that I have in the Google Doc. They do really good research on um, where social media is, um, what's working on social media, uh, what the different audiences are looking for, as well as um, engagement numbers. And they do um, studies quite often um, that give you the latest. And, and one thing that has um, been consistent is um, looking at uh, attention spans of folks that are looking at um, media online. And those attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. Um, they now say the average human has about the same attention span as a goldfish um, of about seven seconds. Um, that's very important when you think about social media because not only are you inundated with all different kinds of information coming at you, um, you really have to hook someone's attention in a short amount of time. Um, so that's something that's really important to think about storytelling on these different platforms as well. Is starting strong, having a good hook, um, drawing people in so they either stop to look at what you're, um, you're posting 
or to stay with the video or um, with the story. So um, looking at that research every now and again from folks like Pew um, really helps you understand where the audience is. Um, there's also great analytics, which I'll touch on shortly, um, in which you can look at how your posts are doing on these different platforms and see what's working, what's really engaging audiences and what's not. So the tools, um, as I mentioned, you basically have everything you need in your pocket with your smartphone. You can think of it as a digital journal. You can think of it as your uh, main camera. You can think of it as your video camera. And then you can also think of it as your laptop um, to share right from apps right on there. And using that tool, you can make things as simple or as complex as you like, um, as simple as taking a picture and sharing it with some information or with some of the different apps on your smartphone, you can put together uh, more complex graphics or even short videos that, that you can share right from there as well. And we're gonna touch on some of those. Um, so basically getting started, um, some folks think about social media and they're just overwhelmed by the thought of it or they see some of the stories and how it can be um, very polarizing online and they are just, um, very intimidated by it but um there's a lot of really good aspects of of social um and some very positive networking and connections that you can make online um on these platforms so if you're a little worried about it or intimidated about it the best thing you can do is it's free to create a profile and you don't have to do anything with the profile you can just get on and you can I call it lurking. Um, you can see what's happening. You can look at um, different organizations um, or companies you might be interested in. You can see what they're posting. You can see uh, the approaches that they're taking. Um, you can look at different trends um, and then you can start to experiment. You can you can wade in a little bit um, and and try some things yourself. Um, if you want to do it personally on a personal account before doing it professionally, um, you can also keep your account private if you want to try some different things and just try them out on colleagues or friends and family. Um, you can definitely wade into it. You don't have to jump in the deep end by any means. Um, I'll have all of our um, social um, links to our social accounts on the Google Doc that you can look at. Um, the image on our left is our Instagram feed where you can see how we post um, on Instagram. And it's also fun on um, the different platforms. You can see what's trending. And those um, trends can be fun to follow and take part in as well. The one on the right is a post that we did from Delaware Sea Grant. Um, when Jurassic Park was coming out, there was a hashtag that was trending called Jurassic Zookeeper because in the movie, Chris Pratt gets in front of a bunch of velociraptors and he has a stance and then he controls them with the stance and this look. And it's a pretty, pretty funny part of the movie to think that somebody could do that. So what do, um, Zookeeper started doing around the, um, basically around the world is um, posting uh, pictures of themselves with their own critters in the stance and using that hashtag um, to, uh, to take part in, in this, a trending um, movement that was online um, that a lot of folks were following and having fun with. So we took part, our education um, coordinator put on his Coast Day t-shirt to, to get in the Sea Grant spirit and went out and we did Jurassic Zookeeper on the Bayside Beach with the horseshoe crabs. Um, so it was a fun part, fun thing to do to take uh, part in something that was trending as well as um, folks that were following the hashtag might not have necessarily been following us. And it was a way for um, other folks, um, particularly in the Delaware area or, um, or New Jersey, where there are a lot of horseshoe crabs, it helped build awareness as well. Um, so trending things are fun to follow. Um, here's another thing that was trending, which was pretty funny. Um, it was called the Dolly Parton Challenge, uh, making fun at how different um, social platforms, how people, um, Put themselves up in different ways on the different platforms. Um, Dolly Parton did it in some of her different roles, um, showing her kind of professional self. Facebook, you always show your best self. Instagram, you show your fun self. 
and Tinder, you try to look really cute. Um, so that was another thing that started trending. A lot of celebrities did it, and then aquariums and others joined in. Um, I bring it up because these different things, um, as the otter can see, as you can see with the otter, um, it's it's very similar kind of for a, a lot of us um, who are doing this, uh, doing social media from a organi organizational standpoint, we really don't have to worry about being our different selves on these different platforms as you do individually, because um, you are yourself at the core. So there's really not much difference between these platforms. You might have slightly different audiences um, and demographics following you, which you can tell um, in some of the analytics. For us, Facebook tends a little bit older. Uh, Instagram tends to be a younger audience. Uh, we are definitely not on Tinder, um, <laughs> but we are on LinkedIn and we do have a, kind of a professional following there. So. When it comes to personal accounts versus organizational accounts, um, they're very similar. They're just slightly different audiences. Um, another thing that folks can get overwhelmed with is thinking, oh, I have to do social media and I have to do all of it. I have to have accounts on all these different platforms and that can be overwhelming as well. Um, and just wanna say, you don't have to do it all um, when you're, Waiting into it, look at the different platforms and see which one um, seems most interesting to you because you want to have fun with it as well. Or see where many of the other organizations that are similar to you, yours, um, where where they're posting. And also know that a lot of times you can cross post on these different platforms. So you don't have to um, worry about creating different posts for each one. Uh, what we do is um, we have kind of an editorial calendar where we look at each week and we look at a couple different things, such as if there are special days like World Oceans Day where we can do a fun post, um, or if we have something coming up like our magazine coming out, or we have an aquaculture workshop um, coming up that we want to uh, draw attention to, and then we plan accordingly. Um, we mostly focus on Instagram um, because from Instagram, we can automatically post out to both Facebook and Twitter, which makes things a lot easier. So when I say plan and multitask, um, what we do is we kind of plan our posts around the Instagram posts and then multitask by then sharing it out to our other platforms from Instagram. So in this example, um, we were uh, giving a sneak peek of a story that we have coming out in our next next issue of Chesapeake Quarterly that's on um, headboat captains, black headboat captains in the Chesapeake Bay. So we did a beautiful picture um, with kind of a teaser um, and then shared it out to the different platforms. So um, the Instagram post took a couple minutes for me to put up, but then it just took a couple extra seconds to post it on the different platforms. Um, a couple things that um, we just keep, oh, someone says I don't see my slides changing. Does everyone see the headboat pictures? Okay, and then the next one, are we good? All right, thumbs up. Um, at the heart of our social media strategy, we keep it pretty simple and um, Basically three things, post with purpose, anything that we post to our social media um, platforms, we can connect right back to the work that we do. Our um, kind of tagline is science serving the Maryland coast. So anything that we post, we can directly link back to any of our uh, initiatives, some of the extension work that we're doing, the research that we fund, um, everything has meaning that we post and it goes back to um, our, our core values. Uh, we do quality over quantity. Uh, we're not worrying about getting out six posts a day across all platforms. Uh, everything that we um, post, we try to have a really quality post, uh, whether it's the information or the graphic or the photograph to make sure that um, anyone who's following us knows that when we're posting, we're, we're putting up something that's educational or informational and we also um, strive to be engaging 
and uh, to share with others. Um, that's the beautiful thing about social media is that it is social. It's not only uh, pushing out material, it's also connecting with others and engaging with content and then sharing out um, information from our partners and supporting our partners and other organizations and researchers that we're working with. So while um, we put out a lot of our own posts, if you look at our Twitter feed, um, a good 30% of our posts are sharing information from others. Um, we all have slightly different audiences. So by sharing with one another's work, um, we can share with different audiences and help build everybody's um, following and awareness of the work that we're doing. So one example of engaging um, the audience, is, this is an example from our Instagram feed. Um, this is something that was installed on a stream near us and we posted it using a hashtag, uh, what is it Wednesday, which is a, a fun tag that trends. Um, let me get this to play. And um, we asked folks what they thought it was. And so we put up the picture, not saying what it was, um, and asked the question and um, basically asked our audience to engage with us. And as you can see, we got a lot of different guesses um, and some fun, uh, some fun answers as well. And um, I made sure to keep track of it and respond and answer any questions. And it turned into a very educational post um, and helped um, some others shared it as well that were involved with this um, piece of equipment. So it also helped build our audience as well. Um, so we had really good engagement on this just by asking the simple question, uh, what do you think it is? For so social sharing um, on Facebook, we get quite a few um, shares on our page and we share um, likewise as well. Um, this is from our, um, we did a post on um, our REU students. Um, oh, sorry, this is a different one. Um, this is showing the, the, the same one that we then shared to Facebook and we had different engagement with different folks um, so I was also keeping track on this and answering um, as well. And then this um, was the one I, I thought was coming up first. Um, this was an opportunity that we had out for students that we asked folks to share. Um, and you can see there we had over 33 shares from other folks to other groups. Um, and then talking about the snowball effect with social media, um, a lot of times when those folks shout out, particularly if they're individuals, um, then we got additional shares from those shares. So um, overall, we had 33 shares off of our original one, but then we also got shares off of those. So we ended up having over 100 shares of that post just from that snowball social effect. And that's the wonderful thing about social media. Um, and I've mentioned hashtags. Um, they're an important um, concept to understand throughout social media. They're a great tool to organize content. Just think of it as a search term. Um, a lot of folks follow particular hashtags that they're interested in. Um, so if you're interested in aquaculture, you can um, set up a search to have any posts that come up either on Instagram or Twitter that have that tag uh, aquaculture come up. Um, or if you're really interested in food preparation, a lot of people um, follow the term foodie. Um, but basically, when you think of those keywords, um, you stick the pound sign in front of it and then it becomes a hashtag. Um, you don't use any space, spaces or punctuation in them. And you can make them as simple or as specific as you like. Um, dog, very simple. Bulldog, puppy, very specific. Um, and you can put as many hashtags as you like in a post to uh, help others find it. Just don't overdo it. Um, usually three or four is really good in a post. Um, you think about those keywords or terms that you, uh, that are um, this, the main subject of the post that folks uh, might be interested in, and you can put it in front of those words um, as a hashtag. Also, if you have a special event or a project, um, you can create your own hashtag for it um, and then uh, spread the word beforehand. So anyone that's doing social media at the event 
um, or taking part can follow that hashtag or do their own post and use it, um, which you can then um, collect afterwards or share out by looking for that specific um, one. For uh, Delaware Sea Grant, they've got Delaware Coast Day, the first day of, um, for Sunday of October each year. They use the tag DE Coast Day. Um, and everybody knows that year in and year out. So um, starting a few weeks before, you start seeing the hashtag come up and a lot of folks sharing their excitement, um, which is then good for the organization to share um, since it's such a community um, event. So one example of that for us, um, we started um, our own hashtag called um, MDC Grant Backyard Ecology. We started it um, back in the start of the quarantine in March. Um, all of a sudden we were all telecommuting and we were all stuck at home all over Maryland, um, everywhere from Western Maryland to the beach where I am. Um, and we were trying to figure out what we could do um, that was related to our work that would also be of interest to our followers who are also stuck at home. Um, so everyone in the program started sharing pictures of what they were seeing in their own backyards um, along their, um, their walks around the neighborhood. And we shared them out with some um, ecological information and then and whenever we could linking it back to um, the work that we do and and collected it into a really great um, kind of ecology of Maryland um, series that folks could follow along um, from their own homes. And that led to um, some good engagement and some new audiences as well. Um, you can also use uh, the hashtags to compile information and experiences across platforms. Um, there's a couple different ways to do that, but one really great uh, tool is Wakelet, um, which I'm going to show a little uh, video on real quick. Um, but these tools are really good in that um, it's a great way for you to, um, if a lot of folks are sharing different uh, posts about your event, or if there's a current event, um, like locally, there's an oil spill along the Atlantic coast um, where folks were sharing um, pictures and information from a bunch of um, different backgrounds. And, um, or if you wanna do a, a timeline of events, um, you can use some of these curation tools to pull together your own story via social media, and then you can share that out um, with your followers as well. This is also a great thing to do, even if you're not on social media, if you don't have the time or energy to run your own social media account, but there's something that's happening or um, you're really um, involved in an aspect of research that other folks are sharing, you can compile all that information into a curated story called a wakelet, um, which I'll um, show you this overview right now. So the web is full of content and this is growing every day. Sometimes the best content can get buried in no time at all and it can be hard for people to find this content, find it again and then share it. So rather than losing the content that matters, you can save, organise and share it with Wakelet. Anything from the web can be saved in Wakelet. Articles, tweets, Instagram posts, YouTube videos, maps, Spotify playlists and so much more. And once you've organised your content into collections, you can reorder the content however you want, add your own notes and images, and then tell a story with it. You can keep your collections private, make them unlisted, or make them public and share them with the world. You can customise your collections however you like, and even invite people to collaborate with you on collections that you've created. Wakelet can be used for anything you like. Save articles to read later, tell stories, build visual portfolios, gather research, plan your next break, archive Twitter chats, and promote people, events, and ideas. And it's completely free to use. So sign up today to get started. So it's a great free tool um, where I've seen people collect um, anything from uh, recipes to um, to news stories, um, and then you can share out in an easy way with a link, um, or you can actually embed it into your own website. Um, so here's an example of one that we've built uh, based around our backyard ecology posts. Um, 
It's a very simple um, curated page of all of our um, backyard ecology posts from the newest down to the oldest. So you can actually go back through the seasons and, and look at all the posts um, in one place. And it makes it very easy to share, um, share out as well. Um, and then making connections is the other aspect of um, social media that can be so important. Um, a lot of times from our posts, we then get messages that um, we can then uh, talk to folks one on one and connect them with um, folks in our program or researchers or extension agents. Um, these are two quick examples where somebody had a question about um, uh, educational posts we we put up. They wanted to connect with our um, our uh, assistant director for education on um, how he does some of his micros uh, microscope work in the classroom. And then another example from our um, a backyard ecology posts where they were really interested in the plant and how well it would do in their backyard um, because they had uh, a very wet area. So it was a great opportunity for us to connect them with our extension folks and our master gardeners that were able to help them out. Um, so there, again, that's a really important social aspect. Um, and one tool that I put in the Google Doc um, is talking about following hashtags and kind of keeping track of everything. TweetDeck, if um, you get into Twitter, is a, is a great tool in which you can have everything in one place. It looks a little overwhelming, but this is actually a, an organized way to follow different things. Um, on this TweetDeck, I can see every uh, thing that I have scheduled. I can see anyone um, that's mentioned us. Um, I can see my current news feed as well as following um, different hashtags that might be important to our program. So if you really want to get into Twitter, um, it's a it's a great tool to um, keep track of everything in one place. And I mentioned measuring success. Um, all of these platforms um, now have really great analytics where you can dig into um, what you've put up and what's working and what's not. Um, this is a screenshot from Twitter. Um, I can go on the Twitter analytics page at any time and I can um, look at anything from the past week to the past year. Um, I can look at specific um, sections of time. I can see what the top tweets were, how many impressions and engagements they got. And then I can look at them individually. So if one did really well, um, like this example here, I have on um, a, a post that was on uh, on a, a salmon um, conference, um, I can see what aspect of it did well. If it was a lot of folks um, clicking on the media, if it was a lot of people retweeting it or sharing it, um, I can also see how many people left uh, replies or questions. Um, so these analytics are very easy to read, um, very easy to uh, look at specific posts as well as uh, your feed as a whole to see what's really working and what's not working. And then you can um, tailor your approach um, based on these numbers. Um, YouTube also is really wonderful. I just wanted to show this because um, you can look at your top videos at any time. Um, right now, all of our top videos um, across the board are on fish farming, uh, raising fish in ponds, a fisteria video, um, striped bass and one on climate change. But you can look at the specific um, videos themselves um, in the right image you they have something called uh, the attention span or uh, audience retention you can play the video and the graph shows exactly where people drop off um, so you can see how many people um, are still watching after 30 seconds or still watching after 60 seconds and it, it helps you look at your material and see where folks might be dropping off um, when we first did this at delaware we learned that the more B-roll and pretty pictures we had, the more we retained people, the more we had talking heads, the more uh, folks dropped off earlier. Um, so we had more people talking with B-roll over rather than showing the people talking and our retention went way up. So it's another great analytical tool to see what's working. Um, Instagram also has something similar. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about pictures and, and video to um, help make some of these posts really engaging. Um, images are, are really key. As I say, pictures worth a thousand words. 
Um, this picture was a winner of a contest on ocean conservation that a scuba diver happened to get because you've got everything um, basically uh, to say about marine debris in that one picture that's very, uh, uh, stops you in your tracks when you see it. That's not something you expect to see. And, and that's the goal in social media. Um, I call it slowing the scroll. Um, here's my tweet deck. And as you can see, as I scroll down the feed, what really jumps out are things with moving images um, and pictures. And that's what makes folks slow their scroll when they're going through social media. Again, you've got the short attention span um, and you wanna stop folks in their tracks when they're going through social media and um, really pull them in with a strong visual to grab that attention and make them stop and, and engage with the post. Um, strong visuals are always important. You can also um, dress up visuals with some fun text. Um, the show you be mine was a fun one we did for Valentine's Day um, in which we um, then connected folks to how uh, scientists warm up the oysters to uh, increase production in the hatcheries. So we connected a, um, a popular Valentine's Day hashtag with the science of oyster spawning on that one. Um, again, uh, if you're trying to get folks to share um, a post, if you're hiring for a position, having that strong visual and the words we're hiring always gets attention um, and, and makes things quite shareable. We see um, more engagement when we add some um, little extra text, which is easy to do. Um, I've got a couple uh, tools that I'm going to share on how to do that. Um, also, for images, you can celebrate uh, topics, events, and milestones. Um, the picture on the left, you know, anytime you go to a conference or you present at a conference, it's not always the most exciting imagery. You've got people standing at podiums and presenting in front of screens. Um, so sometimes if you just have a picture of a person at a podium with a screen, it's not that engaging and that folk people are gonna scroll right past. But if you take several of those pictures together and they make a collage with a logo um, and add a little color, it makes it more interesting and, and more engaging. And that's easy to do with a, a lot of the photo apps. Um, you can also add numbers. The 1000 one was when we reached a thousand followers, we put out a big shout out. Um, and for milestones, there's a fun, um, a hashtag called Throwback Thursday. There's a simple hashtag that's just TBT. Um, and we use that hashtag on, the, on Thursdays to celebrate um, some of our history. Since we're a long-lived program, um, anytime we find something cool from the archives or this uh, a slide of our old logo, we share that. And a lot of the times those throwback um, posts really get a lot of engagement with um, folks that have followed us for a long time, or we ask them to share memories. And again, we have um, asking that question, asking folks to engage with the post. Um, we get folks sharing some really great stuff that in, in turn that we can share out as well. Um, a couple of the tools for um, sharing uh, or putting text on um, photos. Um, one I really like that's free is called Word Swag. It's very simple to use. It's a free app for your phone. Um, a couple of quick examples of basic pictures that we took, and then we put um, fun text on top using this app. Um, one for Memorial Day, one on stormwater. Um, but basically you can open up your own picture or they've got a really cool free photo library um, from Pixabay that you can use royalty free um, images that then you can put your own text on top. Um, in the middle one, I just search for ocean and there's lots of beautiful basic images you can use. So um, even if you don't have a great picture, um, you can use one of theirs. Another great one is um, Canva. Um, this is an app that's free as well. Um, I actually pay for the pro version. It's the only one I pay for, I think it's 10 bucks a month because it makes my life so easy and I can make things really, really quick. Um, and I'm gonna show you this quick video to show you just how easy it is. You used to have to know uh, Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop um, to do this stuff. Let's discover so, Canva's editor, learn how to create a design and customize a template.
From the home page, select a template and start with a new blank design. Welcome to the editor. This is the side panel where you'll find all the things you can click or drag and drop to add to your page. In the templates tab, there are thousands of professional designs to get you started. Upload your own photos or videos in the upload tab, just like this. Browse millions of premium stock photos from our photo library. To search, type in keywords for what you're looking for. To narrow it down more, add a plus symbol and then another keyword, or use these handy filters. In the elements tab, you'll find illustrations, shapes, animated stickers, charts, graphics, and much more. Search in exactly the same way. There's so much to explore. Discover our high quality video library with millions of videos at your fingertips. Perfect to get your designs moving. To create your first design, start from scratch or use a template. Everything is customizable. Select the object you want to change and a toolbar will appear above. It's never been easier to express your creativity. And it's just that easy. It's drag and drop. Um, they've got an app I can use on my phone. Um, I can also use it through a web uh, browser, um, which is very easy to do. Um, and then they also have everything already sized for you. So you can pick if you want to do a Facebook post or a square Instagram post, or um, uh, if you want to do a header for Twitter, they, they automatically size everything for you. You can switch out colors easy. Um, these are just a couple examples of uh, how I've used it over the last two weeks um, for quick posts. Um, they've got these free uh, graphics, these little oysters that I dropped in in the uh, Join Our Extension team, um, the Maryland map and the fish for this fellowship program. Um, and then you can also do quick um, changes like switching out the background cover color if you want to share something a few different times but make it look slightly different. Um, all of these took me just a couple minutes to do, download, and then share on social. And then it gives you a really nice, bright, um, engaging image that kind of slows that scroll. Um, and it's it's made my life so, so much easier um, on so many different aspects. And again, they've got a lot of great images and video as well. Um, and then on the video side, um, Pictures are wonderful. Moving pictures um, are even more engaging. Um, we use video in a couple different ways. Um, we do some short kind of um, another hashtag is DYK, which stands for did you know? Again, engaging, asking questions, um, getting that kernel of information that folks might uh, be the hook for folks to um, want to learn more about or share with others. Um, but we keep them very short, informative, and um, and shareable, um, usually under a minute, um, sometimes under 15 seconds. Um, Instagram has a, a 60 second uh, limit for their main feed. Um, so we usually keep it under that and, and then share it to the others. But um, here's a few different examples um, from kind of our, uh, our fisheries and aquaculture side of how we use video. Um, this first one is something that really um, was better captured uh, using moving picture than stills, and this is one of the few that um, we did using the GoPro because we can um, submerge it in water, um, which gives you an interesting um, look. So this is a quick little recap about a, a great um, a milestone in one of our educational programs in which um, some overwintering uh, yellow perch in one of the school programs did something that uh, nobody expected and the students in the classroom were really excited about. And there we submerged it. They um, laid those egg chains, which was really exciting. And it was a first for the program um, in the state. Um, so we could use it, do that really short video and we put it out with a press release. And when you add those little extra elements um, like that, uh, we find that more folks pick it up because it has that um, that cool visual that goes with it. 
Um, so we got on quite a few uh, local blogs and like the Chesapeake Bay Magazine blog um, because they were really excited to have that short video along with the, um, the press release. Um, another example of a, a quick recap um, to show you a short video. Um, this was for an event over several days um, up in uh, Wisconsin. And we worked with several different programs on this grant. Um, so in doing this video, we highlighted all of our different partners, the Sea Grant uh, programs, uh, the research partners, um, and this just used short, these are uh, basically five second clips from my phone um, with some text on the screen that highlighted all that happened um, and gave a flavor of the event. And then when I shared it out, I could tag all those partners and then they could share out um, as well. Um, so it had the social aspect as well. Um, another great thing that you can do with your phones is um, using time lapses. If you have an event, you're going to be way too busy to do something um, to run around and um, take pictures or take video. You can set up um, a phone or a GoPro and you can capture a time lapse of all of the activity. So this was um, a two hour span in which we were trying to figure out the best way to um, capture microplastics under a scope um, for an educational program. Um, so since we had all of our cameras tied up in, in doing that, we put together the time lapse to go out with a story to show kind of how much um, effort it took in the lab to be able to do that. So um, use those features on your phone, the time lapse feature, or um, they have a great slow-mo feature if you have something that usually happens really, really fast and it's fun to slow it down, whether it's a spawning oyster or, um, or something that happens in a second that you can slow down, use those features of your, um, your phone as well. And then videos are also really good for hands-on examples. I don't know why these are, sorry. Ah. I need to go way back. It jumped around on me, I apologize. So the how to, there we go. So this is a series we also started um, as a result of the quarantine and lockdowns um, is we did some how-to videos we called stuck at home shuck at home i'm um, showing people how to shuck oysters um, in di using different methods and we had some of our partners take part um, and they use their own cell phones to record these and send them to me and then i worked with our aquaculture specialist to do the text on screen and we share them out in a series that we call the shuck at home series um, that we have both um, on our social media platforms as well as a playlist on YouTube. And uh, we looked at several different ways of both shucking as well as preparing oysters that folks could do in their own kitchens. Um, and then also be shared out by um, some of our partners who lost some of their um, commercial, um, with restaurants closing down, they lost some of their commercial uh, um, with the restaurants not ordering, they were trying to get more oysters into homes and have people comfortable using them. And then um, one last thing I wanted to show is um, you don't always have to have video clips to make videos. You can also make them out of stills. Um, so here's another shuck at home we just did on oyster stuffing, um, which was done just through pictures that were sent to me, showing the ingredients, a quick overview, of how to shuck and then we in the description we put the full recipe so um don't feel like you have to use video clips to make videos you can use still imagery as well and just put them together in like a quick slideshow give the different steps in the um examples
batch of the finished project product. And then they added in a fun picture at the end that I had to use showing the empty shells um, to show how delicious it was as well. So that's just a quick example of how you can also use stills. Um, and then on Instagram, again, Instagram, you can do some shorter versions um, for our, these are all, um, this is one of our Maryland backyard ecology ones showing a clam worm, just a very simple under the scope um engaging because you can see the movement um instead of just a still image uh instagram also has a cool feature called boomerang where you can um it automatically takes a very um short video that kind of bounces back and forth that's eye-catching um which is always great around water and then they have insta stories as well in which um you can share uh a story um, in a different format on Instagram that a lot of folks um, really enjoy watching. Um, and this is just an example of the same um, story that I showed you in the video recap that we did as an Insta story as well, using short video clips um, and some text on screen. And again, this is a way that I could also tag partners and locations for people to follow along and. Um, for our partners to share as well. And then one last as aspect of Instagram. Skip to the end. Um, they also have Instagram TV, um, which is another place where you can share videos and where we share our Shuck at Home um, series. Again, multitasking, we already have these videos. Instagram TV is a way to share longer videos that aren't exactly in your feed. Um, so it's something where we can take our videos that we already have for social and have for YouTube, and we can put them on Instagram TV as a multitasking um, way as well. So those are just... Um, a couple of different examples of using both stills and video on, on the social platforms um, and some of the most engaging ways that we found that have worked um, for our program, but we're always experimenting and trying um, uh, different things and um, constantly looking at the analytics, um, seeing what works, seeing what's most engaging, and then tweaking our strategy to um, to follow what folks want. So that's our Instagram, uh, Twitter, and uh, Facebook handle there, MDC Grant. We keep it the same across all platforms, so it's easy for folks to find us. Um, and then there's my um, email address as well. But again, when I share out the Google Doc, um, all my contact information is in there as well. So happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Lisa. The first yeah. question is coming from Matt Bream. And if you yeah. go back to the what is it Wednesday, he wants to know what it was. Um, so that was a um, it was a test of a trash collecting um, mechanism in which it was funneling all the um, the the trash that was coming down that creek, which is in a highly urban area. Um, into that one area before it entered the main stem of one of the tributaries of the Chesapeake Bay. Um, so it was both to reduce um, the, the technical was to basically reduce um, the waste going in, but then they were also using it as a research aspect as well to see what was in um, uh, what was coming downstream and they were collecting it and, and looking at it from a data standpoint as well. Okay, your next question is from Emma Wirma and she wants to know. I'm going to read the question. Lisa mentioned that she did not worry about posting 6 times per day quality over quantity, but is there a target number of posts per day or week? keeping engagement and good amount of activity on your page? It's that's a great question. Um, and that's, uh, that's something that, um, we constantly look at, um, particularly in when we post, um, 
we found some times of day tend to be uh, much more, we have a lot more engagement than others, particularly um, it seems like later on Fridays and early on Mondays, I think folks are either winding down for the week or seeing what's new when, when the week starts up. Um, so when we are planning our posting schedule, I look at those times where we tend to get most engagement and I try to plan posts around that time. Um, if we've got something like an event coming up, I'll probably post more frequently to build excitement around it. Um, but it's, it's again, one of those trials and errors, um, both seeing what works, um, also what's doable um, with your own workload, um, because it, it can be a time sink if you say, okay, I'm, I'm going to get six posts out a day, but then you want all of your posts to have their own graphics. Um, um, it, it can quickly be a, a time sink as well, or you can look at it as, okay, I want to do six posts a day, two of them original content, but four of them I'm going to share partner content. Um, and you can kind of look at that aspect as well. Um, we usually try, we get out at least one post a day, um, usually several others, especially if we have a lot of um, uh, things coming up like deadlines of research um, REU or, or research deadlines just to make sure to keep people informed. Okay, next question from Sharon Monin. What is your primary social media goal? Behavioral change, getting noticed, serving coastal science to an interested audience? Does the answer depend on your platform? Um, somewhat, it depends on our platform. For us, it's it's building awareness of our work and um, as our role as a uh, a non basically we're a non biased uh, source of scientific 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 information. Um, so we want to uh, kind of strengthen our role as a, a trusted source of information within our region. Um, for a lot of the uh, issues important to the Chesapeake Bay, and that includes water quality, um, the fisheries, uh, aquaculture, um, coastal resilience is a really big one. Um, so mostly as, um, as a resource. Um, for others, um, if it's, if you're in more of an educational, um, uh, program, it might be building awareness about the programs and what you're offering and the events you have coming up. Um, if we are, uh, we do not play adv advocacy role at all, but a lot of nonprofits do. Um, so that can be a very important goal for uh, nonprofits is um, being a strong advocate for um, the causes that are important to the organization. Um, so for us, we are, are basically um, wanting to be that trusted go-to resource for um, issues within the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Okay, your next question is from Matt yep. Ream, and I'm going to add one on to it. Absolutely. So Matt asks, what platform do you seem to get the most interaction from followers? And I'm going to add on a lot of our listeners today are aquaculture producers, and I know that you work with aquaculture producers on the East Coast. So have you gotten any feedback from them that they are using other social media platforms than what you're using for education? Um, Instagram seems to be a really strong one, particularly now that when Instagram first came out, it was basically the feed and pictures and, and little videos. But now there's the different aspects with the Insta stories, as well as the IGTV, where you can tell the stories in different ways and get different types of engagement. And Instagram, um, because it's it's so visually focused, it's very, um, very engaging. Um, and it, it, particularly in the last couple of months, it's kind of a, been a safe space for folks on social media. And we hear with politics and Twitter and, and people um, just getting overwhelmed by um, some of the things that have been going on in their Facebook and Twitter feed. A lot of folks kind of went to the safe space of Instagram where um, it's a lot of that isn't present. It's 
it's a lot of, of beautiful uh, media content and great information. Um, and again, um, we kind of focus on the Instagram posts first and then share out from there. And I may make little tweaks when I, I share to the other platforms, um, but the, um, the engagement is usually strongest there unless it's a particular um, thing like an internship opportunity or a job in which then we get a lot of shares on Facebooks on Facebook with people sharing with their own um, kind of circle of um, or, or pages or groups um, that might have an interest in the specific opportunity. That's where some of the other ones are stronger. But for sharing technical, uh, educational um, information, um, and that's where a lot of our aquaculture partners are too. Um, um, and they're doing some really uh, beautiful and educational work on seafood preparation, um, uh, what to look for in seafood, um, answering questions, doing Q and A's, um, and it, Instagram is kind of the most fun to be on as well. <laughs> Before I go on to the next question, yeah. I just wanted to highlight Titus shared that a good uh, seafood producer to follow on Instagram is the fishmonger's wife. Yeah, okay. there, there's some really great ones. Um, yeah. Next questions from Phil Schombach. He wants to know how many people are maintaining your social media accounts? <laughs> me. It's me. <laughs> um, and, and that's why I say, you know, really think about um, the amount of time you have not, not to overwhelm yourself, not to try to do it all, to work smarter, not harder. Um, and that's where um, I, if, if I was doing it full time and not doing everything else that's involved in my job, I could, I could tailor things a lot more specifically to different feeds and do more things and other thing on, um, you know, Pinterest or LinkedIn or even TikTok. I wanted to really get the, the younger groups, but um, I, I know the amount of time I have in my schedule and everything that's on, on my plate. So um, that's where um, the, the multitasking um, part is really important if you are a party, uh, a party of one, a band of one. Um, but I do get really good support in getting content from a lot of um, the folks in my program. So when I'm planning, um, one thing that's in, I, I should mention, I, I plan out my week and then I send it out to my whole program. And I say, hey, this is what I've got on my schedule for this week. If you've got anything that fits the bill or if you've got any great uh, pictures or if you have something that you need me to promote, um, let me know so I can also put it in the calendar. And, um, and the extension folks, um, like the Shuck at Home, um, I, I talked to all of our aquaculture extension folks during one of their meetings and they came up with a concept and they've all been filming their own clips. So they take their own pictures and videos and give me all the content and then I pull it together for the post. Um, and then of course with the um, backyard ecology is the same. I've got people in the program, I, it's part of my reminder each week. Um, and then folks send me pictures and say, hey, just saw this in Frederick, Maryland in my backyard. Um, and then they help me ID it and then we put together the posts around it. So on the content side, um, I get great uh, stuff coming in. Thank you. We are over time. If you have a few minutes, I have a follow up oh, question I want to ask you. Yep. Um, and we, as a follow up to this, we will send out an email and Lisa's going to provide that Google, Google Doc, which will have a lot of tools for you to look into your own time. And we'll put together a list of aquaculture businesses that are using social media so okay. that there'll be references for people that are selling seafood by using social media. So Lisa, Thanks. here's my question. 
Yes. Um, we talked a little bit about how social media trends were changing and about how Facebook was starting to become a more um, pay to use type of yes. um, platform because of the way the algorithms is and how they want you to pay to boost your posts. And you indicated that Instagram uh, might be a good direction. So would you speak a little bit about that? Um, yeah, so that that's another um, point where uh, like keeping track of, of some of the Pew Research work, um, they do a really good job of um, highlighting changes in how some of the social media platforms are, are, are doing business and um, Facebook in particular is constantly changing their algorithm and everyone's always scrambling to kind of keep up um, with that. But over the past two years, they've really made it kind of pay to play in which um, now I think the organic reach, if you, if you don't pay to um, promote your post, um, they say maybe 10% of your followers might see the post in the feed. Um, so when I talk about engagement and, and shares on Facebook, that's where um, that can be really important in which um, if you can tag a couple partners in the post and then they share the post as well, um, then you get that larger reach and then you hope that more individuals share it with their friends. Um, and that's kind of your best bet on, on Facebook is to make something that's um, very engaging and shareable so then you can build that um, that social snowball um, without having to um, shell out money to do so. Um, that being said, some of their um, ways to promote the post can be very helpful, particularly if you have an event um, in a specific area or you're trying to reach a specific demographic um, in that they're collecting everybody's information in their profile. So if you're trying to reach um, 40 to 45 year old Hispanic women in your community, you can actually pay to have your post promoted to people within that demographic within a zip code. Um, so there are some some areas where that can be um, that can be helpful if you're trying to reach a very specific audience. Um, but uh, Instagram tends to be a lot more organic. Um, they um, they also have an algorithm as well, and it, it's. Facebook has now owns Instagram, so it'll be interesting to see how that changes. Although I, I hear some of the uh, latest chatter with the um, antitrust stuff that they might actually break them apart because Facebook is getting too big. Um, but on Instagram, you are uh, much more likely to have most of your followers see what you put up um, in the feed. Um, so you, you reach more of your audience. Um, and then on places like YouTube, you actually can have people subscribe. And when you put your videos up, um, your subscribers can get notifications when you put new videos up. So each one is slightly different um, in, in getting the, uh, um, keeping track of how many folks are seeing and, and what's working and what the algorithms are showing your audience and not. But um, that, that change, the latest change in Facebook has really, downed engagements um, on those posts. And that's another reason why I kind of focus on Instagram and then share to Facebook from there. And Instagram's great for foodies, isn't it? It is wonderful for foodies. And there's some great hashtags um, that, that folks follow on there. Um, so um, particularly some of our Shrek at Home um, prep videos uh, were focused on specific recipes, like one was oyster sliders, another was oysters Rockefeller. So I could use some of those um, hashtags to uh, help build the audience as well, because um, folks that weren't following us that said, oh, look, they're sharing some really great oyster stuff would then follow us. Well, I know we're over time. Yes. Does anybody have one last quick question for Lisa before we say thank you? and? Okay, 
So I don't see any other questions coming in. Thank you guys for all joining us tonight. This is the second webinar in our aquaculture marketing series. Um, the first one was on marketing 101 and that'll be available online soon. And then in February on the 22nd at noon, we're gonna be having Simone, I don't wanna say her name wrong, um, Valde Souza, and she's gonna be speaking on consumer preferences. So a big round of applause for Lisa. Thank you. And everybody have a good evening. You too. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Amy. Well done.